Are you planning a trip to Italy and need some destination inspiration? There are so many amazing things to see and do in Italy. In this video I will list the top 15 historical sites and locations in Italy. These well-known Italian landmarks will wow you. Let's review Italy's history, top meals, national language, best sport, and fashion before we get to the main topic of the day. The Vatican City and San Marino are two microstates that are entirely immersed within Italy, which is situated in Europe at the center of the Mediterranean Sea, and is bordered by France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia in the north. Humans have lived in Italy, a country in Europe, for at least 850,000 years. The cradle and epicenter of the ancient Roman civilization was Italy. Italy is breathtakingly stunning. Beautiful cathedrals, historic Roman ruins, and works of Roman and Renaissance art are among the nation's many well-known tourist attractions. Rome serves as the capital of the 20 regions that make up the nation. Rome, Milan and Naples are the three biggest cities, with Rome Leonardo da Vinci Fiumicino, Milan Malpensa, and Bergamo Caravaggio International Airports being the busiest. It is a volcanic country. It is currently the most densely populated and potentially deadly volcanic region in the world with about 30 volcanoes, including the three known active ones, Etna, Stromboli, and the famous Vesuvius. The pizza is absolutely worth it, even though you could die here. They can grow a lot of food, because one-fourth of the land is arable. You are undoubtedly well-versed in Italian cuisine. But each area kind of specializes in a particular cuisine. The best traditional foods in Italy are the topic of discussion. In response to the question, why would you like to travel to Italy? The delicious food, including their renowned pizza, is probably what you'd want to try first. Italian cuisine is a source of national pride, despite the fact that the country is stunning and has wonderful scenery and architecture, a rich culture, and an incredible history. The most traditional and delicious cuisines from every area of Italy are featured on this list of the best traditional foods in Italy. The next time you have an Italian meal, you'll want to exclaim, Mamma Mia! Because it is that amazing, Pizza is undoubtedly the best Italian dish to eat traditionally, according to our list. No introduction is necessary for pizza, nevertheless. The pizza that you may be familiar with is probably not the same as the pizza that is eaten in Italy. Each element on pizza in Italy stands out on its own, thanks to the dish's freshness, simplicity, and reasonable size. There are two varieties of Italian pizza, Neapolitan pizza or pizza napolitana, which is thicker and smaller, and is also known as pizza made in the style of Naples, and Roman pizza, or pizza romana, which is larger, crispier, and originated in Rome. Pasta, Italian cuisine staples include, pasta. The ideal illustration of simplicity's beauty we can make more than 400 different types of pasta from just 5 basic ingredients, eggs, wheat, water, olive oil and salt. Pasta varieties that are among the most popular include fettuccine, spaghetti, penne, and tagliatelle. The best pappardelle is found in Tuscany, and the best fettuccine is found in Rome. Each region in Italy has its own distinctive cuisine. Pasta can be made in a number of different ways, including creamy, with pesto, in fresh tomato sauce, or even stuffed. However, spaghetti a la carbonara, which is prepared with guanciale, egg, pecorino cheese and black pepper, is unquestionably one of the most well-known pasta dishes in Italy, particularly in Rome. Arancini, a dish from Italy fried rice balls are called arancini. The two primary varieties are Roman and Sicilian. Both are stuffed with risotto grade arborio rice, mozzarella cheese, and ragu, or tomato sauce. The Sicilian arancini recipes differ in that they frequently include beef and peas. These are typical fillings. However, other vegetables can also be used to fill arancini. Arancini, which means little orange, are coated in breadcrumbs and deep fried until they have a golden and crispy exterior. This is how they receive their name. One of the best Italian delights. 
They are offered with a side of marinara sauce and can be found all throughout Italy in markets, pubs, taverns, and fine dining facilities favored by locals. Focaccia Best Italian foods include focaccia. A special bread was required to honor Italian dough because it is so delicious. Between flatbread and pizza, there is an oven-baked Italian bread called focaccia. It may have a varied appearance, different fillings and garnishes, and even a different name depending on the locale. It is referred to as Shakiata in the Tuscan region, Strazita in Basilicata, and Crisia in Umbria. Typically, it consists of bread with olive oil and herb toppings. Ideal as an appetizer or even an afternoon snack. Cheese The Italian cheese culture is so extensive that it requires its own list. Since ancient times, cheese has been consumed on the Italian peninsula. Roman artisans produced a wide range of cheeses and experimented with them by smoking, melting, and maturing them, providing the foundation for several well-known cheeses that are still available today. How can anyone say no to a delicious piece of cheese? Strong, soft, creamy, grainy, sweet, or salty. Each region has perfected a particular variety of cheese, as is typical with all Italian cuisine, but they are all excellent. The greatest mozzarella, a fresh cheese made from buffalo milk, is allegedly available in southern Naples, according to locals. The Emilia-Romagna city of Parma is home to Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. The appeal of Parmesan cheese, commonly referred to as the king of cheeses, is that it pairs well with virtually anything. One of the best strong cheeses and one of the most adored in Italy, Gorgonzola, is an Italian blue cheese from the Gorgonzola region. The best Italian cheeses also include Grana Padano, Pecorino, and Mascarpone. Lasagna One of the national dishes of Italy is lasagna. The pinnacle of cuisine is a dish consisting of layers of pasta, meat, cheese, and tomato sauce. There is also a vegetarian option that offers the delicious Italian cuisine to everyone by replacing the meat with veggies. The dish is native to the Naples area, and was first made with bechamel sauce, ragu, and cheese. Over time, however, as more diverse ingredients became accessible, lasagna evolved into what we know today. Ossobuco The most elaborate Italian meal is ossobuco, which originates in Milan. It may take up to three hours to finish the slow cooking process, but the meat is so flavorful and tender that it will be worth the wait. Ossobuco is a dish made of calf shanks, vegetables, garlic, lemon juice, and other spices in a red or white wine sauce. When the dish is all prepared and you can taste the delectable bone marrow, that is when it is at its best. Its name, Ossobuco, which translates to hollow bone, derives from this and encourages people to taste the entire dish, makes it one of the most traditional cuisines in Italy. Risotto Italian Rice Dish Italians discovered a way to make rice particularly intriguing and delectable because rice by itself tends to be a little monotonous. This Lombardy-based rice dish is made using arborio or carnaroli rice. The most well-known version is risotto alla milanese, which includes saffron, beef, chicken, or fish stock, cheese, and lard. A creamy sauce composed of butter and other seasonings binds everything together. In other areas, the risotto is served with various proteins and sauces, giving it distinct colors while maintaining its delicacy. Truffles Truffles from Italy Even while truffles can be found in a few other places, no other country produces them with the quality and quantity that Italy does. Truffles are one of the best gifts Italy has given the world. Between the months of November and March, truffles, a highly scented fungus, can be discovered in the Piedmont and Umbrian woodlands close to the tree roots. They may be black truffles, which have a milder flavor and aroma, or white truffles, which are stronger, and are discovered by trained dogs. They are both among the priciest foods available. Truffles will give your cuisine a powerful, yet delectable, unique smell that pairs well with spaghetti, a salad, or even a breakfast egg. Gelato in Italy Gelato is not just ice cream, although it may look similar, it is quite different to what is commonly known as ice cream. 
Gelato has way less fat than ice cream, and a stronger taste since it's not mixed with water and air. Gelato is made with only fresh ingredients, making it unable to be stored for long periods of time. Additionally, it is stored and served less cold than ice cream, giving the gelato a smoother texture and making it more refreshing while enjoying. Language in Italy 93% of the population of Italy speaks Italian as a first language. A regional dialect is the mother tongue for about 50% of the population. Although many dialects are deemed different languages by linguists because they are mutually incomprehensible, they are not recognized by the government. Sport in Italy In Italy, football is the most popular sport. One of the top national teams in the world is the Italian national football team. They have triumphed in four FIFA World Cups, 1934, 1938, 1982, and 2006. They have also won one Olympic football event, 1936, two Central European International Cups, 1927-30 and 1933-35, competed in two finals, 2000, 2012, finished third at the Confederations Cup, 2013, and won two European Championships, 1968 and 2020. Since its inception, football has enjoyed enormous popularity, because of its straightforward set of rules, and entertaining format. Luxury and Fashion in Italy As the famous saying goes speak English, kiss French, drive German, and dress Italian is often used to describe how to behave. Since the 11th century, Italy has been known for its superb workmanship, impeccable tailoring, and opulent designs, and the production and export of fashionable goods plays a significant role in the nation's economy. Industry and production, particularly in the production of luxury goods, are major drivers of the Italian economy. Italy is kept afloat in large part by globally known corporations like Fiat, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, Ducati, Pirelli, Amani, and Versace, Dolce Gabbana, Gucci, and Prada. Being Italian in many respects is similar to having a feeling of class that is almost expected. You don't just go in here with your shoes unpolished, no matter how intense things may become. Both society and fashion have an impact on each other. It's a close bond between them. Everyone has the freedom to select how they want to express themselves through fashion. The statistics support the idea that fashion is crucial for expressing oneself and developing one's identity. Italy's third largest industry is fashion. The Italian fashion, textile and accessories sector is one of the most important in the world for revenue generated. Number of people employed, and the number of companies involved. Besides its economic value, it's also a creative hotbed for expertise and craftsmanship, rooted in centuries of culture and beauty. Italy has always had taste for the beautiful, with foundation in the early days of the Italian Renaissance. Today, this tradition is represented by an industry that is to Italy what the automobile sector is to Germany. So let's get down to business and discover the best and most famous landmarks in Italy. Vatican City also known as the Vatican City-State, is a city-state, micro-state, and enclave located within Rome, Italy. It is a landlocked independent nation. The Vatican is more than a fortified city. It is home to one of the largest art collections in the world, which is housed in the Vatican Palace Wings. The smallest fully sovereign nation-state in the world is Vatican City. Leaning Tower of Pisa the Leaning Tower, Campanile, one of Italy's most well-known historical attractions, is just one of several significant structures found in the Piazza dei Miracoli. The Composanto, the Battistero, Baptistry, and the Duomo are the others. We adore how appealing it is to both young and old, and with tourists holding the tower up with their hands or using it as the gelato on their ice cream cone, it must win the prize for the most well-known and predictable tourist sap. Just watching folks attempt to take that corny photo is entertaining. But after you've had your fill of people watching, go inside and climb the 294 steps to the top to take in the vistas. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, a medieval bell tower that captures the imagination, 
is undoubtedly the most famous tower in Italy. Due to its sand-filled, flimsy foundations, the tower, which can be found in the Field of Miracles close to Pisa's cathedral, began to lean a few years after construction on it began in 1174. Pompeii and Herculaneum in Campania, both Pompeii and its neighbor Herculaneum provide a hitherto unattainable window into Roman era life. A large number of the Roman structures in both towns were flawlessly preserved by the volcanic mud, ash and lava that flowed in 79 AD. The College of the Priests of Augustus, the Roman Baths, and the Theatre are all still largely intact at Herculaneum, while many of the homes and structures in Pompeii are in outstanding shape. These include the Basilica, the Surgeon's House, the House of Mysteries, the Capitolium, and Public Baths. Additionally, both are home to numerous exquisite mosaics, wall paintings, and sculptures. Visitors can virtually stroll through the historic streets of ancient Rome to receive a first-hand glimpse of daily life during a specific period in our nation's history. A few artifacts, mosaics, and other decorative pieces have been saved and are on show at the archaeological sites and the Naples Archaeological Museum. Pompeii alone might fill an entire day, but Herculaneum is also much more worthwhile and less crowded. The Colosseum, Rome. This enormous amphitheater, the largest the Romans built, could accommodate more than 50,000 spectators and is arguably the most famous of all Roman structures. It is a remarkable achievement in engineering and architectural design, having been finished in 80 AD during Titus' administration. Its opening was commemorated with 100 days of festivals, and it was even filled with water to simulate naval conflicts. It was used for gladiator fights and games. Despite the centuries-long pillaging of most of its once intricate adornment, it nevertheless inspires all. Baia, Italy. Dot in the Bay of Naples, the Baia Underwater Archaeological Park captures a striking fusion of history, archaeology, mythology, and geology, preserving the wonders of a Roman Sodom. In its heyday, the classical Roman city of Baia was the hedonistic Las Vegas of the time, but now its remains are partially under the waves. Some of antiquity's most important figures, such as Cicero, once lived there. In the middle of the first century, Nero ordered the construction of a villa beside Roman Emperor Hadrian, enticed by its beautiful scenery and restorative hot springs. The city of Baia, a stunning underwater archaeological wonder situated in the volcanic Flarian fields, is submerged in the sea as a result of Bradyseism activity. It serves as a beautiful memorial to Roman majesty in the Neapolitan area. Baia, a well-known resort town for centuries, catered to the leisure needs of the wealthy and powerful among the Roman elite. The city, which was built over naturally occurring volcanic vents, was renowned for its curative hot springs, which were abundant around the city and relatively simple to construct spas over. Sadly, the good times did not last and the city was taken over. The ruins of the formerly opulent town were deserted by 1500, most of the ancient ruins were submerged beneath the shallow waters of the bay after the city ruins were cleared away as a result of the same volcanic vents that formerly attracted visitors to the area. One of the few underwater archaeological parks in the world nowadays offers tours of Baia's ancient ruins. Viewers may see the city's crumbling buildings and astonishingly well-preserved statues. The city's waters nevertheless contain wonders even though it is no longer a vacation destination. Explore the underwater city of Baia while snorkeling to get a glimpse into history. There is no need for dive equipment at this location. Snorkeling offers a calm and convenient route to the historical underwater world. The ideal environment for an outstanding snorkeling adventure is the shallow seas, which are teeming with conveniently accessible historical sites. The Pantheon, Rome. The Hadrianic era's most well-preserved Roman structure was completed in or around 126 AD. The 142-foot diameter circular building contains a portico with granite Corinthian columns, a pediment, and what is still the largest reinforced concrete dome in the world. Originally devoted to all of the pagan Roman gods, it was changed into a Roman Catholic church in the 7th century in honor of Saint Mary and the Martyrs. Today, 
It is one of Rome's most popular attractions, drawing about 6 million tourists a year. The Amalfi Coast The Amalfi Coast, like St. Terry above, astonishes tourists with its stunning shoreline of charming hamlet clinging to precipitous cliffs. This breathtaking coastline, which stretches from Positano to Salerno, and is located below Naples, is also a recipient of the UNESCO World Heritage List. The greatest way to experience the area is to go through the villages while residing in a villa perched on a clifftop with a view of the lovely Mediterranean Sea. Valley of the Temples, Sicily one of the most important ancient Greek archaeological sites, measuring 1,300 hectares, is located next to the town of Agrigento. Seven Doric-style temples from the 5th century AD are located there. The area was first repaired in the early 19th century, and it is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and an Italian national monument. The Temple of Concordia a superbly preserved temple with a triangular pedimented front and six columns, is a highlight. The Last Supper, Santa Maria del Grazie, Milan. Even if the Renaissance-style church dedicated to Holy Mary of Grace is stunning, the painting that decorates the wall of the convent refectory is undoubtedly what draws most tourists. The Duke of Milan, Ludovico Il Moro, commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to create the Last Supper arguably one of the most well-known paintings in history. His work on the massive 15 times 29-foot mural, which depicts the Last Supper of Jesus, and his followers at the time Jesus predicts one of them will betray him, took place between 1494 and 1497. Tickets should be purchased in advance, which you can do here. Roman Arena, Verona. Most people automatically link the charming northern Italian city of Verona, as the setting of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. However, it is also home to one of the country's most impressive Roman amphitheaters. The vast, well-preserved 2,000-year-ago arena could seat up to 30,000 spectators, though damage from an earthquake in 117 has limited this to 15,000. Today it is still used for concerts, notably an opera festival held each summer. One of the must-visit historical places in Italy is the Roman Amphitheatre in Verona, known as the Arena. Built in the 1st century AD for watching gladiator fights, the Arena is the third-largest Roman theatre in size. Explore the massive amphitheatre, which is used as a theatre today with the stage, scenery, lighting and the works. Grand Canal, Venice, the Grand Canal. One of the most well-known rivers in the entire world, is thought to have been the path of an ancient river that empties into the Venetian lagoon. Grand aristocratic homes took the place of the stilted cottages and warehouses that formerly existed on the canal's edge as the Republic of Venice grew through trade. Today, each side of the canal is flanked with more than 170 structures, most of which date from the 13th to the 18th centuries. There are four bridges that cross the canal, with the picturesque Rialto Bridge being the most well-known. Duomo, Milan We have a special spot for Milan, and the Duomo, which is made of white and pink marble, is unquestionably its centerpiece and beating heart. Italy's largest cathedral, the Duomo in Milan, took more than 600 years to construct. It can accommodate up to 40,000 people inside, which helps put its size into perspective. Visitors can now take in two quite distinct perspectives of the structure. Visit the stunning interior first, then climb to the rooftop to see this historic building from a very different angle. Dormo, Florence. The entire historic center of Florence, like Rome, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Dormo in Florence, Cattedrale di Santa Maria del Fiore, however, epitomizes the spirit of the city for us, just like the Colosseum in Rome. Anolfo di Cambio and Filippo Brunelleschi, who were inspired by the Dome of the Pantheon in Rome, created the Dome. Its creation heralded the beginning of the Renaissance era's resurrection of classical proportions and architecture, and at the time it was erected, it was the biggest structure of its sort in the entire globe. To get a fantastic view of the city, choose to ascend the Duomo's 463 steps. Or, you might choose to ascend the 414 steps of the nearby Campanile to enjoy a spectacular view of the dome itself. 
Sassi of Matera. Italy is a really diverse nation, and Matera, in my opinion, best captures this. The Sassi in Matera are essentially houses carved out of the rock, creating a dramatic, lovely and distinctive setting. Learn more about the past of these cave homes, some of which date back to the Paleolithic era, and have been continuously inhabited up to the present day, by paying a visit to the Sasso Barizano. They may be familiar to you from the most recent James Bond movie, No Time to Die, which featured as the setting for its suspenseful opening scene. Rome. The popular saying, all road leads to Rome, was literally true in the days of the Roman Empire, when all the empire's roads radiated out from the capital city, Rome. Rome is a historic city and the capital of Italy's Lazio region, Roma province, and the country as a whole. On the Tiber River, Rome is situated in the center of the Italian peninsula, roughly 15 miles, 24 kilometers, inland from the Tyrrhenian Sea. Rome, the Eternal City, was once the seat of an ancient republic, an empire whose armies and polity defined the Western world in antiquity, and left seemingly permanent imprints afterward, the spiritual and physical seat of the Roman Catholic Church, and the location of major apex of artistic and intellectual achievement. It continues to be a political and religious hub as well as a monument to the past's imaginative imagination. So there you have it, 15 best places to visit in Italy. Share your experience in the comments area, if you'd like. Make sure to click the subscribe button. For more travel guide videos, kindly stay with us. In our next video we will be talking about Colombia. It is the only country in South America with coastlines and islands along both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. For more amazing facts about Colombia, kindly click on the notification bell. Making your travel simple in Desi Travel Log channel. I appreciate you checking out our list. Thank you.